how do you feel? Good, good. I am so happy to be here. Uh, we have a little thing happening here, and um, I'll tell you more about it in a moment. But what you have to know right this minute is we are live on Facebook from Unity of Cape Cod. Let them hear you. Say hello. Woo! I'll tell you more about this in a minute, but part of the reason that I'm here is I'm on a book tour. I'm introducing my book, Falling Into Ease. And so I have to do, have to do a Facebook Live from wherever I am. So this is Facebook Live from Unity of Cape Cod. Sunday morning at the Unity Church, we just finished this amazing weekend of a women's retreat. So we're so glad that everybody live is here, and you can turn that off now. So <laughs> they're going to record it here. So um, yeah, it is my joy and my pleasure to be here. Uh, just a little bit about me. We couldn't, nobody, none of us could find my bio this morning. They're like, who are you? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I've been in a women's retreat all weekend. My brain's not working anymore, right? Right, but uh, I am an ordained unity minister, and uh, I have known Ellen Carty since 1998 when we ended up at Unity Village together and when I was entering into the seminary program, and our journeys have gone like this. We were raising children who were about the same age at that same time, so our families came together, and uh, it's such a delight to be here. I've served ministries in several states around the country. I currently have an alternative ministry, which means I don't do church. Can you do it with me? I don't do church anymore. <laughs> I don't do church anymore. But what I do is I bring my work to the world by coming to women's retreats, by facilitating. I teach online, and my mission and my purpose here is to answer this question. But I'm not going to answer the question. I'm going to have you answer the question. Are you ready? Oh, by the way, I teach in the seminary, too, and I know Tony, who's here, who can't be here today, is one of my students. How cool is that? <laughs> ah, I would have loved to meet him in person. Anyway, so here's the question. It's an intense one, so take a breath. Like, are you up for it? Really? Like, really? Would it be all right with you? Would it be okay with you if life got easier? One, two, three, yes. four, yes. five. How about the far back corner? Yeah? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Good deal. Um, could you hand me my books, please? I forgot to do that. I wrote, this, um, I wrote this fabulous book because of this question. Would it be all right with you if life got easier? And almost across the board, I don't think I've ever asked that question to a single person. I've asked it to thousands where they said no. So here's what that tells me. That tells me that even if life is really, really, really good there's still a way to get easier. Even if life is really, really, really hard, there can be an opening for life to get easier. What would happen in your life if it got easier? What would it be like? What would it be like? Ellen, what would it be like if it got easier? More fun. Yeah. Hallelujah. Anybody up for more fun? Yes. Alicia, what would it be like if it got easier? Can we have an amen? Yes. Yes. What would it be like? Think about it, though. What would it be like if it got easier? And what keeps it from being easier? Like, think about the things that aren't so easy. Like, like you know, maybe life is busy, you know, and maybe you don't have enough time, or you don't have enough money, or you don't have enough fun, or you don't have enough joy. And maybe you think that's how life is supposed to be. It's not. It's not. Life on this planet, we have it all turned around backwards. 
we have it all turned around backwards because many of us live in a, well, our society or our culture, and many of us has bought into this belief, is that, you, you know, you, you, you're a kid, and then your parents are like, I got to teach you to, to walk, and I got to teach you to talk, and then I spend the next 18 years trying to get you to sit down and be quiet. Hold still and be quiet. And then you got to go to school and then you got to get a job. And then you start your job and you go through your career. And I'm not saying everybody's this way, but, but feel the cultural, feel the societal. I got to work until I'm X age out here. And then once I'm X age out here, if I have enough money and if I have enough luck and if I have enough health and if I have enough and if things go the way I want them to, then maybe I can have a little iota of fun for a moment. Right? backwards. It's backwards. We are on this planet to enjoy our experiences. Now, I'm not saying that we won't have experiences because life on this planet is filled with experiences. You know what I mean when I say experiences, right? It's code for hard stuff. <laughs> I'm on the microphone, so I have to watch my language today. <laughs> <laughs> hard stuff. Because life on this planet is filled with hard stuff. And our master teacher, the Nazarene, Jesus, said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. I have come that your joy might be complete. And what I know to be true is if it's not complete today, it will never be complete. And so as I've been in ministry for over 16 years, and before that as well, ordained for over 16 years, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. I've walked through it all. I've had my own personal experience of it all. You, lo you might look at me. You might look at me. <laughs> and you go, she got no idea what she's talking about. She's got an easy life. And I'm going to, yes, indeed I do. But I will promise you it was not always an easy life. I will promise you that I don't always, uh, let me say it this way, I will um, offer to you, I don't want to make promises about this, I will offer to you that I still have moments of struggle. Oh. I had a moment of struggle the other day on the airplane. I was not going to share this story, but <laughs> just, you know, you get what you get, right? So I'm coming here, Ellen and I planned this retreat, oh, I don't know, eight, nine, ten months ago, a long time ago, and, and so you know, it's on the calendar, you know what you got to do, you got to get your clothes, I'm living in Arkansas, I didn't hear anybody say, why Arkansas? <laughs> I would always get, I'm living in Arkansas, it's still like 90 degrees, we're still swimming in the, in the beach, in the lake, and you know, it's hot, and then pretty soon... Two weeks from now, I go to Arizona, and, and it's hot, and we just moved this summer, and so everything is uh, between two states, and I go to my closet. I'm like, you know what? I don't even have a pair of pants, and I certainly don't have the right shoes to go to Cape Cod. I thought it would be cold. I'm cold, but I thought it would be even colder, so I'm really grateful it's not, and then so I found exactly what I wanted, and I got my outfits all ready, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's going to be perfect. It's going to be great, and I'm packing at like 10 o'clock Wednesday night, and I have to leave at 8 in the morning, and you know, that last minute thing, and, and I get my my slacks, my pants I'm going to wear on Friday and Saturday both, and they're a little linty. I'm like, I'm just going to freshen them up in the dryer for a minute. Guess where they are? They're still in the dryer. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> now, the, now, the tops I brought were tunicky, but, I mean, they weren't really even miniskirts, right? <laughs> right? And so I'm, I'm on the airplane, and I have this, oh, no, moment. <laughs> I'm like, well, in my old day, I would have had a little bit of a meltdown. And I would have felt embarrassment. I would have been worried. I would have been anxious. I would have been embarrassed. I would have even had a shame attack. I mean, how can you forget your pants? <laughs> what are you going to wear? And so I just text Ellen. I'm like, I'm on the plane and I'm on my way. But oops, I forgot my pants. So I get here. And there are like three women who are like, oh, you can have mine. And I had like all this abundance of pants. So I'm getting dressed yesterday morning for day two of the retreat. I'm like, I don't know which to choose. I have too many choices of borrowed pants. How cool is that? That is falling into ease. 
Can you feel how it could have been a horrible start to a weekend that would have been hard all the way through? But it's all about how you can get clarity, how you can stop the spin out, right? Anybody ever spin out? Anybody ever spin out this year? Anybody ever spin out this week? Anybody spin out this morning? I had a pretty easy morning. I'm grateful for, but you know, I have those spin out moments and, and, and it happens. But, but here's what I know to be true. You are a spiritual being on this planet having a spiritual experience in a human condition. Human conditions are hard sometimes. One of my friends, long, long, long time friends is, um, you know, her mom died like two days ago. She's like, can you do the funeral this weekend? I'm like, oh, no, I can't. Opportunities for hard, opportunities for choice. I know people in my life and even in the circle, because I got to know many of you this weekend, are grieving, are struggling. Some of us have health challenges, right? Some of us have financial challenges. Some of us are just like, I don't know what to do next. But here's what I want to give you today. I want to give you an idea, but I want to give you an experience of how you can fall into ease in any moment. Now, I, I chose the word fall. I didn't choose the word fall. It, you know, spirit chose the word fall. And, and I used the word fall into ease with this utmost gentle. <sighs> so let's try it. Will you try it? Can we play? So first, before you fall into ease, you've got to get tense. So put your shoulders in your ears and clench your fists. <laughs> oh, this looks really normal and natural, doesn't it? <laughs> Right? And then just go, stop. Just say it out loud. Stop. <laughs> and let it go. Did you hear the breath in the room? Let's do it again. But this time we'll do that audible exhale. Okay, ready? This is life. Ah! Okay. You all have to do it. It's loud on the mic, so do it for me. Ah! And on three, audible breath, relax. One, two, three. Three. <sighs> That's the breathe out. Alicia's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. Breathe in, breathe out. You can't do one without the other. Did you ever notice that? It's equally important and sometimes more important to breathe out. Because when you exhale, you surrender. When you exhale, you release. When you exhale, you have the possibility of falling into ease. So, um, anybody have gardens? A few of you. So, we know that gardens, um, gardens are beautiful, and if you're a good gardener, your garden's going to be spectacular, and if you're kind of a so-so gardener like I am, it tends to get a little overgrown because I don't pay attention to it all the time. Okay, you know what I'm talking, even if you're not, it's not you, you know, you know your neighbor, right? You know that neighbor who doesn't, forgets to weed? You know, right? Right? So when you, when you play with a garden, when you, when you take a garden, it is so important, especially at the beginning of time, to clean it out. Right? So picture the garden that is overgrown and full of weeds. We moved into a new home, not a new home, new home to us this summer, and our yard had not been cared for in at least about five years. Now, somebody came in and, you know, did the basic cut and watered once every three months or something. But it was, you know, the flower beds were just overgrown, shall we say. So picture it in your mind. Very visual, right? It's just like, whoa, whoa what are we going to do with this? So my husband is an avid outdoor. He would be in a project anywhere. I mean, he's just going to go take a project. So he loves that, and it's hard work. So he gets out there, and I look at it and go, I don't have a clue what to do with this. I don't even know where to start. And he starts pulling weeds, and he starts pruning here, and he starts clipping there, and then he's got this all cleared out, and he's got this beautiful, much more empty space. Empty space, spaciousness, is something you need to remember. Okay? We'll come back. But spaciousness, he's cleared it 
out. What if he had tried to plant beautiful rose bushes before he cleared it out? It wouldn't work, right? It flat wouldn't work. So, we have this thing called life, and we have this thing called our mind. Our minds, generally speaking, and I'm not pointing any fingers, just know if it's you, our minds are overgrown gardens. They're filled with the weeds of worry or stress or distress. They're overgrown with thoughts of what I should do or what I think other people think I should do. Does that one ring a bell? There's a lot of women in the room. I don't know if men do that one as much as women, but most of us do that. I don't know what I should do, but let me figure out what I think you think I should be thinking I should do. And if you got lost, that's perfect. We have overgrown thoughts of later. I'm too busy. I have to mop the kitchen floor. I can't play with my kids. I can't go out on the kayak because I've got to get this technology figured out. And I'm getting, and we get caught. Anybody relate to this? You get caught in something that you're trying to get done and it doesn't work. That's the overgrown garden of the mind. My husband takes care of the physical gardens. What I have discovered is a way to clean, to prune, to clear the mental garden. And the mental garden is really the, um, it's the mental body, it's your thoughts, it's also your emotions, it's also the subconscious. We're not going to go into that. But it is, is that deep. You've got to get down and get the roots out we have, we have this tree in this garden, this one of the front areas, and it's, I don't know what it is. I wished I would have asked what it was, but I wouldn't have remembered anyway. But it's this tree that sprouts itself. So then it comes up like these, look like these little beautiful plants. Just like, they, I mean, you know, it was all cleared out two weeks ago, right? And then we have all these little shoots. I mean, like hundreds of them. And they're coming from the root of that tree, so they're near impossible to get rid of. You have to go under the ground, get the root, clear the root. You know, even think of your dandelions, right? If you don't get the root, what happens? They multiply. So when you get to the root of the overgrown garden of your mind, and you can pluck it out, then what happens is freedom then what happens is fulfillment. Then what happens is this whole state of being of ease. Just ease. Just ease. Somebody said to me this weekend, they said, have you always just like been this easy? And I'm like, oh, yeah, no. Uh, Yeah, no. (laughs) No. But it comes from doing the mind pruning. It comes from creating space. Space. There's a chapter in my book called Creating Spaciousness, and it is about that pruning. It's about so much more than that, but it's about any time that you're tied up in knots. There's another chapter about tied up in knots. It's not the same, two different chapters at least. When you're tied up in knots about something, think about the knot in the gold chain or even the knot in the garden hose, depending on what you'd rather play with, with your fingers. I'd rather be with a gold chain myself, but, right? But when there's a knot in that, what do you do? You begin to create space in it. You begin to create a little spaciousness so that you can see how to unravel the knots. In the garden hose, you lay it, you begin to lay it out. You create spaciousness. You open the kinks. You begin to create spaciousness. And what happens every single time we create spaciousness, it's like the exhale. So let's exhale with the intention of creating spaciousness in our own being. (sighs) 
When you create spaciousness, you can land into your heart. You can land into that point of connection with spirit. You can land into the place where you can hear your divine guidance, where you can hear your intuition. You land in the space if you've got like, I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to take the next step. Then take a step back. Create some spaciousness. It can be split second. Or give yourself 30 seconds. That'll feel like a lifetime. If you're hurrying, 30 seconds feels like a lifetime, yeah? Right? I don't have 30 seconds. I don't have 30 seconds. I promise you, you do. So take 30 seconds. Step back. Tense up. Let go. Simple as that. Tense up. Let go. Just let go. Just let go. Take back up another step. I'm back as far as I can go. Ooh. I'm back. Take another step. Lift your eyes up. Look up. You know, we get so laser focused on the problem, right? But when we can step back, create a little space, look up, then what can occur to us? Oh, I need to go that direction. And you take a few steps, and then you hear, oh, I need to go that direction. You take a few steps, and pretty soon your knot in your fine gold chain is unraveled. Pretty soon your hose that was all kinked up is free-flowing. Pretty soon your garden of your mind is cleared out, and you can begin to live from your heart. In order to have life abundant, in order to have joy complete, you have to get out of your brain. We think our brains are what should lead our life on the planet. It's not true. We can use our brains, but we need to let our brains and our mental faculties be subservient to our heart, to the love. We look at life on planet Earth today. What do we need more love of? Oh, love is the only answer. It's the only way. What? There's a million love songs. Love can build a bridge. Love. But we can't be love when our gardens are overgrown. I mean, we, we can. It's not like you can't. But when you begin to clear out the overgrown of your mental garden, you can land into this place of stillness, of spaciousness, of freedom, of fulfillment, of clarity. Would it be all right with you if life got easier? One, two, three. That would be Annie. Would it be all right if you found the pathway through to your own heart and you could live from this place of fulfillment. Can you imagine what would your life be like if you got up every morning already fulfilled? Like, it's already done. It's not that you don't have to go do your to-do list. It's just that the to-do list doesn't drive your life. Right? It's not that you don't get to deal with your problems. It's just that your problems no longer have to drive your life. Take a breath. Feel that possibility. The tools that I gave you already today between the song with Alicia, between the the tense up, the step back, the unravel, those are extremely powerful spiritual tools. And for many of you, you take one of those and your life will begin to change. Can you imagine being a congregation, unity of on, of on, on, unity on Cape Cod is the place of ease. You've, all of a sudden, you become an even bigger beacon than you already are because what people feel, whether they come here or they drive by here, is like, oh, peace. Not a mental peace, not a, we're going to be peaceful, but a real peace that comes from presence, that comes from heart, that comes from spirit. Some of you want more. Some of you want to know how to fall into ease. So you know what? I got the books. They're on the table. I've got my book. I have to commercialize. I also have a guidebook. If you want to know how to do it, pick up the guidebook. And there's another book back there. I'll be at the back. 
to answer any questions. If you want to know even more than that, you can sign up. Come talk to me at the table. Come find out. Ask me your question because what I can bring is quick, easy, simple. Boom, open up spaciousness. Open up pathways. And what do you get? Take a breath. Shoulders back. Freedom. Freedom to be. Freedom to see. Freedom to know the truth of who you are here to be. I see that for you. I hold that for you. I know that for you. God bless you all. You have been watching the message from our Sunday celebration service here at Unity on Cape Cod, providing a positive path for spiritual living. Please join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 147 Walton Ave, Hyannis, Mass. And visit us online at www.unityoncapecod.org.